Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petite Garden Centers and today we are doing a spotlight video on panicle hydrangeas. As you can tell, there's a lot of pollinators buzzing around too, so if I look distracted that might be why. Um, first of all, with the panicle hydrangeas, um, you need to know that this is one of many hydrangea families that we grow. But what you need to know about panicle hydrangeas is that they really are the easiest of the hydrangea family. Yeah, I'd say the easiest. Um, probably second easiest for us in Northeast Ohio is the smooth hydrangea because it can tolerate a lot of abuse and it's uh, native as well. So, uh, but still, panicle, let's just say easiest hydrangea a hydrangea that blooms on new wood. So whenever you prune it and it starts to grow again, it'll produce buds and flower for you. It is a hydrangea that I will tell you, most hydrangeas we recommend grow in part shade, which is that four to six hours of sunlight. But panicle hydrangeas, you need at least four hours of direct sun. It's better if you have six hours of direct sun or more for them to really develop and grow for you. So keep that in mind. They're probably one of the most sun tolerant hydrangeas out there, can take much more heat, a uh, little bit more drought than your other hydrangea family. So um, do keep that in mind. That's, that's one of the reasons that makes them so easy to grow for us. The other thing is that they are extremely hardy meaning that their tolerance to cold over the winter and again to heat is extreme. So they can go from USDA hardiness zones three, which is negative 40 degrees. So we're talking upper Minnesota all the way down to let's say 20 degrees over the winter months. So that's now down in Texas. So they have this very broad range of growing very well in the United States and you don't have to protect them over the winter. In fact, really the one recommendation is mulch them a couple inches and they'll do fine. You can even grow them in a container and have them over winter out in a container outdoors over the winter if you'd like as well. Um, so again, very versatile, very adaptable, very, very easy. Soil, the only requirement that you really need is that it needs to be well drained. They don't want to sit in wet soil. Um, I will have to say that they can tolerate clay soil, they can tolerate sandy soil, but you want to make sure that it is draining out. They can tolerate uh, a different variations of pH, but we want to just keep it in that average area. So anywhere from 5 to 6.5 is fine for them. It really doesn't matter. Again, this hydrangea, you don't have to worry about pH of soil. If it's really, really low or really high, yes, you want to correct that. But again, in a, in a neutral range and just slightly acidic is fine for them. So that's great too. They're very, very easy in that respect. Um, I will say with fertilizer, these guys don't need a ton of fertilizer. And you'll notice if you are a good feeder of your plant material, you will notice that panicle hydrangeas will grow quickly, rapidly, and that rapid growth will produce very weak sort of um, spindly stems. So if you're overfeeding, that's not necessarily a good thing for panicle hydrangea. So we normally recommend using plant tone and iron tone, applying it once in spring, and once in midsummer, do not apply more than what is recommended on the package, and you're ready to go. Um, these plants will perform very, very well for you. Attribute wise, as I mentioned, there's a lot of buzzing around me right now. It, they are very good pollinator attractants. I do see uh, bees around them quite often. I do see butterf butterflies less often, typically. I do see flies as well. So flies can be one of our pollinators as well. Um, but just keep that in mind that there, there is a lot of attraction to these hydrangeas. And I've mentioned before that, especially when hydrangeas have more of a lace cap, 
type panicle where they have the small true flowers and also the big petaled false flowers or sterile fl flowers that's where you see the most attraction. So right here I have Pinky Winky by me. Pinky Winky is one of those lace cap panicle types. You can tell how fuzzy it is and some of the large petals and some of the small true flowers. There's a lot of buzzing around this one right now. So keep that in mind when you're uh, picking a hydrangea for its attributes. A lot of hydrangeas, um, the panicle varieties, they used to be such late season bloomers for us, like late summer into fall, and it's really not the case anymore. There have been so many improvements in their varieties and breeding that there are hydrangeas that start blooming, panicle hydrangeas, that start blooming usually end of June, beginning of July now. Most of those are the quick fire, if you've ever heard of quick fire family, they really do start quite early, typically midsummer, uh, for the panicle hydrangea type. And then they kind of travel through and bloom mid to late summer and then early uh, fall as well. So they kind of carry us through midsummer all the way through late fall now. So they're a great plant to enjoy, especially if you need color later in the summer season. We always talk about trees and shrubs that are blooming in the spring and do a great job for us, but it's the hydrangea family that can really carry you into the later gardening months and then also hibiscus and those types of uh, plants as well. So um, panicle hydrangeas, I will have to say flowering wise, they're incredible. You can use these flowers fresh. You can cut the stems really at any length that you want or need to use them for cuttings. Um, so you never have to worry about just cutting down two nodes underneath the flower like you would have to with a mop head hydrangea. You literally can choose a short stem or a long stem. It does not matter. So cut them as you need. They dry extremely well. So you can cut the stems and you can put the stems in a vase keep them watered as a fresh flower arrangement. And if you let that water slowly but surely be used and evaporate, those stems will stand up in that vase and slowly but surely dry. And the colors are still phenomenal. They're slightly muted um, from what you had as a fresh cut flower, but they will dry perfectly. You can also cut stems. You can hang them upside down, dry them in a pantry or your garage or garden shed as well. They'll dry and preserve very, very nicely. So we love them as a cut or dried flower. Again, pollinator attractant is obvious with them. And I think they're just one of those hydrangeas that you don't have to do a lot to, and they will reward you with copious amounts of blooms. So let's talk about this plant as far as a landscape plant. We, again, love them in the landscape, love them for the variation in height and shape that you can get. Obviously, when you see a panicle hydrangea, I think most people recognize them as a tree because it's the only type of hydrangea that you do see grown as a tree form or tree type. Uh, this one's limelight hydrangea next to me here. Limelight hydrangea is one of the later summer blooming types, but has that very unique color where it will start with a sort of a white, a pristine white, and then a lime green. And this green will perpetuate throughout the blooms. And then it will start to just slightly blush. The limelights never get a real, real deep pink, um, but the blush on them in the fall is beautiful as well. So um, there's many tree forms of uh, the hydrangea, I should say many varieties of hydrangea trees, but all of them are typically the size of their trunk. So the standard is probably about a three and a half foot trunk. And then limelight on top of it would add another six to eight feet. So that's kind of how you calculate how tall this tree will be. So in the garden, it's probably gonna be close to your 10 to 13, 14, maybe even 15 foot tall as it fully matures. Again, this is a fairly young tree, okay? Um, so keep that in mind as you're looking at 
ornamental trees that are on the small side. So again, usually below 20 feet. It's a great small tree, mid-season bloomer, great pollinator attractant, great fall color as well. So keep that in mind when you're looking at small ornamental trees. As far as the shrubs are concerned, you can really stick them in to a sunny garden and landscape, a perennial garden, a cutting garden, again, a pollinator garden, and they'll do their job for you. Um, the smaller varieties across the front here, I have Little Lime Punch in the front here. I have Bobo as well. I also have Little Lime, and there are many others of the smaller varieties of hydrangea. These are all around like that three foot mark. Three by three is typically what we see them grow and fill out in the landscape. They can get a little bit bigger, um, like a standard mop head. So that three to four foot usually is the max size that you see them out in the landscape. The larger varieties, something like a quick fire or a firelight or a limelight prime, those can get upwards to again, six to eight foot. So again, think about where you would place them in the landscape further back at the corners of a landscape and so forth because they will really fill out and amaze you at how quickly they do grow, do fill out and really fill in a space quite well. So um, as far as the panicle hydrangeas are concerned, like I said, really easiest out of the families of hydrangeas. They are not native, just so you know, because a lot of people have asked me that. They aren't a native variety to the United States, but they do grow so well for us and they're so easy. Maintenance wise, other than the feeding, other than keeping them averagely moist, I should say, again, because they're a little bit more drought tolerant than a lot of hydrangeas, they can take a little bit of drought, but um, keeping them watered, if we do have a dry season, one inch of water, one time per week, slowly and deep watering is always best for any type of plant that you're growing out there. But once the panicle hydrangeas are established, they really don't need a lot of care. So um, keep that in mind. The other thing that we have huge questions about is how do I prune a panicle hydrangea? And the lucky thing is, you can really prune them at any time and you won't have problems with them. But we normally recommend to prune them in early spring, okay? Enjoy those spent flowers through the fall, through the winter, and then go ahead and cut them back in early spring, just before they start to push out or just as they're starting to push out new growth. And Angelo Petiti always talks about pruning them to a nice round shape, usually a large basketball or beach ball size, okay? This will take care of all of that, the old spent flowers, the dried stems, the older growth, and promote new growth and that new growth, again, is what's responsible for building your buds and your new blooms. So again, pruning is not hard. If you wanna do it in the fall, you can do it in the fall, but again, our prime time for these is typically early spring, just so we can take them down, shape them nicely without any foliage in our way and just make sure that they look great. One other tidbit with pruning is that if you have a larger blooming variety, something like limelight, where it, it's really pushing out these very tall stems, and then the stems tend to weep over in the rain and in the wind and what have you, and they start to kind of weaken the plant, do consider cutting them back early spring, and then that new growth that is produced Take that new growth at the end of May or early June and cutting it back by halfway. When you remove half of that, it will make the branches branch out more, but it will also create more buds. The flowers might be a little bit smaller, but you'll have more flowers and it will keep that habit on that plant more compact, little bit stronger stems, so they won't flop over. So that's my final tip for panicle hydrangea. I hope you enjoy them.